Thank you so much, Catherine, for coming and joining us. Uh, it would be great to hear a little bit about what you're doing with your company and where you see blockchain and healthcare going forward. Sure. So what we're doing is creating the blockchain infrastructure that's safely adoptable by healthcare. Uh, and what that means is that those, those that are familiar with blockchain are have heard of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, my background is hospital administration, so I've actually brought in digital tech to the hospital. I used to work at Yale New Haven. And when I was there, I learned about the very strict process and rigorous process of bringing tech into the hospital. And when any entrepreneur or business owner comes in with a blockchain application and has to describe that I don't know where the nodes sit, I don't know who powers the system, we think that that's actually gonna create a wall and a, a, a slow adoption of blockchain and healthcare. So we instead wanted to create the infrastructure that's safely adoptable. And so how is that then explaining this to hospital systems and things <laughs> going forward? So it sounds ironic, but uh, when we bring an application to the hospital, we don't mention blockchain. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a really cool technology, but it tends to rise more questions than, mm -hmm. than it should. Uh, so what we do instead is we'll meet with a clinical team and we'll say we have this uh, care coordination platform, for example, that helps you in bundled payments, mm -hmm. decrease your cost and improve care. And then once we get past all those conversations and sit down with the IT team, and then we say, when they ask about the tech stack, we say we are using blockchain technology. Um, and so far that's been really good. It's been really helpful um, because it allows us to move through that process before shutting the doors and saying we're not interested. Like blockchain maybe isn't ready yet or it makes us nervous. Um, so we've been very strategic in how we approach that in terms of uh, sales and education. Mm -hmm. And was there a particular vertical you're most interested in? I know before you were in MSK. Mm -hmm. Where do you think this is easiest to apply? Yeah, so so for the infrastructure, think of it kind of like um, the base layer that mm -hmm. anyone can build on top of it, kind of like an app store, you can build apps on it. We as a company, when we build our own apps on top of our infrastructure, what we're interested in is value-based care as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, I used to manage the lower joint bundle replacement program in ortho, orthopedics, and when you look at value-based care, orthopedics is a very good vertical to start in. So while we're technically vertical and service line agnostic, we do really like orthopedics. Mm -hmm. um, so that is usually our go-to for our first platform. Um, but we've been approached for um, bundled payments in um, OB-GYN, uh, dermatology, neuro, spine. Mm -hmm. um, we've been approached on all different levels. But ortho is a very good way to start and, and bring it to market. Right. And you're hoping to be a platform, so you're hoping to have other developers come in, yes. use your service, and then be able to deploy it? Absolutely. And what's a little bit different about blockchain is our platform is open source. Mm -hmm. And it's already open source. We have So yes, we have our own software that we're selling, um, but because we have op open source um, tools, we have 15 other companies that are building already. So 15 brand new companies building blockchain technologies in healthcare. Mm -hmm. So. And so, and where do you where do you see this going forward? Where is blockchain in healthcare in five years and ten years? Mm, so I think five years will probably, I think five years will probably still be in um, early adoption and still proof of concept. Mm -hmm. I think in ten to fifteen years we're going to start to see more of a decentralized approach, if that makes sense. So. Mm -hmm. Um, our blockchain is, is public permissioned, which means we, we know who those nodes are. Mm -hmm. But I think in 15 years, it sounds so long in blockchain time because we move really fast, mm -hmm. but 15 years, I think people will feel much more comfortable with truly decentralized applications and token economies and mm -hmm. actually figuring out really cool ways to use token um, in more than just transactions. And if it's not blockchain, I guess now we saw today, NIH talking about million people's studies, other ways to do kind of EHRs and share those, yeah. kind of what are the other options that you see for this kind of sharing of patient information going forward? If it's not blockchain? Right, or I guess, are there, is there anyone else that you're no, worried about? No, not at all. Okay. No, no, it's just us, and, and blockchain is the only solution. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we, in terms of, um, you know, blockchain isn't the best solution for everything. Mm -hmm. Blockchain is a really good way if, if there's not trust established in a system already. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons why health information exchanges failed is because of lack of trust. They didn't mm -hmm. know what big hospital was doing with the data, so they didn't want to send the data up. Um, so you can establish trust in that ne network, which is really helpful. But if you already have a network that has trust, you may not need blockchain. Right. Um, and so there are certain use cases where it does make sense and certain use cases where it may not make sense. And some mm -hmm. other, other solutions are much more efficient or faster or, you know. Got it. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Great to see the talk. Nice to Thank meet you. you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you.